Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we'll go ahead and get your Bible, and let's look at Psalm 129. Uh, we'll continue uh, making our way through, getting near uh, the end. And so, verse 5 today, 129. And uh, again, this um, psalm um, is a familiar thing, and that is dealing with with persecution and here the psalmist says let them all be confounded and turned back that hate zion let them be as the grass upon the housetops which withereth before it groweth up wherewith the mower filleth not his hand nor he that bindeth sheaves his bosom neither do they which go by say the blessing of the lord be upon you we bless you in the name of of the Lord. And this is, uh, we've talked about imprecatory psalms uh, in the past, uh, those kind of uh, psalms where the psalmist would pray to break somebody's jawbone or something like that. And uh, this is light imprecatory. Um, the psalmist is asking God to condemn uh, everybody uh, who uh, comes against Israel uh, and prays again for their destruction. Um, and so it, it, it is, in fact, uh, again, an imprecatory psalm. It's maybe a little uh, lighter uh, terminology than some uh, of the imprecatory psalms uh, use. Uh, but uh, again, it is, uh, that is the nature. Uh, and so he was praying that anybody that hates Israel, uh, anybody that comes against the kingdom of Israel, um, that um, he would, uh, God would uh, come against them. Um, and one of the things, again, and this is something so hard for, uh, for modern Christians to, uh, to wrap our mind around, is that kind of thought, condemn them, destroy them. Um, but um the, the, what they were praying, they weren't praying uh, out of um, spite or um, some kind of uh, act of revenge. Uh, the reason they, they, they prayed this way uh, was because they loved Israel so much. Uh, and so it was their uh, love for and loyalty uh, to God and to his people. Uh, that um, they prayed this, and again, it um, you know it, it, again we're talking about Old Testament, and God had promised uh, Abraham to bless those that blessed him and to curse those uh, that cursed Israel, uh, and so that's what they're praying. Uh, again, it's um, not the way maybe we would pray today. Maybe some of us do, uh, but uh, you know, again, we're talking about an Old Testament, you know, a, a different. Uh, time, but I do think there's some lessons we can learn there. And so let's uh, we'll kind of pull it apart here and see what we can uh, discover uh, for uh, our life today. Again, it's very straightforward. Uh, in verse uh, five, he prays that uh, God would uh, come against those uh, that were um, against Israel, uh, that God would uh, come up to them, come against them, uh, and. Uh, then he, he says, you know, let them be like the grass on the housetops. Now, uh, that seems maybe odd for some of us. Maybe it does not. Uh, we have a issue every now and then. Uh, the gutters on uh, the gymnasium at church, trees grow out of them from all the trees around us. We have to get up there and uh, dig the trees out of the gutters. Um, and so the psalmist here is saying, in, in that time, the housetops were... Uh, were dirt and you know they were covered with dirt and they would grow grass um, and uh, you know eventually again cover them with dirt and the grass seed would blow and they would uh, grow grass up there um, but eventually they would die really quick uh, because the dirt was so thin on the rooftop they couldn't get the roots and they would uh, die and so that's <laughs> Uh, what the psalmist is praying here that they're uh, again that they would um, that like like this grass uh, on the roof 
uh, the the enemies of Israel uh, would uh, fade away. Uh, and then in verse seven, the same imagery of uh, grass, uh, talking about those that come in and uh, you know cut the grass um, to make uh, to bundle and to make hay. Um, uh, the again the they wouldn't cut the grass on the rooftop uh, because again two things they knew it was going to die anyway and being up there it was very thin and it wasn't worth the trouble uh, to to get up there and cut it and so he's just saying they're they're basically praying weakness um, or uselessness uh, on uh, the enemies. Uh, of Israel, and finally, uh, that they uh, wouldn't be blessed. And I don't think, again, I, I'm not saying pray for their jawbones to be broke necessarily, but I, I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with praying that God would stop, would intervene uh, on behalf of the church and uh, for anybody or any group uh, that um, comes against, or, or nation, or state, or whatever, uh, that comes against uh, Christ, that comes against the people of God. Um, and vice versa, we also need to pray blessings upon uh, those who um, stand for uh, Christ. And we see that uh, in our lawmakers, uh, some uh, some lawmakers, some governments, some um, uh, uh, I can't think of what they call it when a new president gets elected. Administration. Some administrations uh, are more uh, favorable towards Christian interest um, than others. There are politicians who are very pro-abortion, for example. Um, judges uh, who are very pro-abortion or pro-homosexuality or anti-church. Um, and, and I think we should be praying for uh, those who are, um, who are supporting uh, godly Christian endeavors uh, and praying that God would hinder uh, and come against the work uh, of those who are trying to hinder uh, and trying to, to be a to be an obstacle uh, towards the advancement of the kingdom of God uh, and again um, you know and then finally most of all uh, for those who are uh, contrary to uh, to Christianity uh, we definitely should be praying uh, for them to Come to know Jesus Christ, uh, and so this psalm uh, I think gives us a, a, a good uh, reminder uh, of how to pray, uh, that we should be praying uh, again that God would intervene, uh, God that would uh, block the those again whatever position they hold, uh, not just in wherever they are if they if they're anti uh, God, anti Christianity, anti church. We should pray for their efforts to be like the grass on the rooftop, uh, thin and weak, um, but to pray for uh, those who are in support of godly efforts, and then pray for salvation uh, for those who don't know Christ. Um, and so uh, it's just a good reminder for us today to, in our prayer life uh, of how uh, we should uh, be praying. Hope that'll help you today. Hope you'll think about it when you pray. And uh, we'll guide you. Have a good day. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning.